So good morning. Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. I am here today with the beautiful Justine Parsons, who is the founder and visionary for your virtual assistant here in New Zealand. Uh, welcome, Justine. Lovely to have you. Lovely to be here. Thank you, Deb. Oh, pleasure. So Justin and I have actually known each other for many, many years. We go a long, long way back, but it was really interesting. We hadn't actually spoken for a while. And out of the blue, I got a phone call from Justine in early 2020 saying that she saw I was doing EOS as an implementer and could we have a chat? And so we got together and we had a chat. And from there began, I suppose, what I would call your EOS journey. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that this morning and how, what that's been like. But before we start, Justine, would love the listeners to get a sense of who you are. So could you share a professional and personal best with me please okay a professional best is um and this goes back to working with you with eos and finding out what our core values are which has been um ah oh, priceless in terms of who we work with and who we work for um so last week we um, successfully won a client, Save the Children. I'm really passionate about supporting businesses who are out there doing good and changing the world. So yes. that's a huge win. We were up against a temp agency. So as a virtual assistant business, we were more expensive. Um, so yeah, that's a huge win. Well, congratulations, and, that's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, personally, it remains the fact that I don't work weekends. I catch up on my emails on a Sunday night, but just having that time to recharge, get away from work is oh, it's so good. And doing it guilt-free. Um, so that's something I'm really proud of and grateful for. Because wow. it's a real skill, isn't it? You can take the time off if you spend the whole time worrying about the business or feeling guilty about it, then you might as well not bother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so some time away is just recharging. Wow, that's wonderful. Hey, look, so let's talk a little bit about your EOS journey. So we had that fateful call. It was before this whole COVID-19 pandemic and we came in and we talked about what um, EOS was. Tell me a little bit about, you know, how did you come across EOS? Why did you come to me? Tell me a little bit about the story. We were approached late not 2019 by a client wanting us to support him in an integrator role. Yep. And I hadn't heard of EOS. So I did some research online, thought, oh, wow, this is simple. It's actionable. And um, there's heaps of free tools. I can do this myself. Um, so I spent a week working through all the tools, um, got really excited, and then life um, jumped it right down the priority list. You know, client work always comes first, so it got pushed aside. And so then when I saw on LinkedIn that you'd become accredited, I was like, wow, I know Deb, I trust Deb, I would love to work with you. Um, so I reached out to you. Yeah. And just so the listeners got a bit of a sense of your business. So you run a virtual assistant business, yes. but it's a little bit different. I mean, all of your virtual assistants are based here in New Zealand. Yes. Um, they're all from a variety of backgrounds. And how, how many do you have now on the team? Um, we've got 27 at the moment. Yep. And um, the business has been going for 22 years. Is that right? 22 years. For the last 10 years, I um, went from just being me to having growing a team of contractors. Yep. Um, trying to get away from a job and more towards a business. Um, yeah, so that's what we do. We support businesses with virtual assistant services. And so for just for those of who don't really understand virtual assistant services and maybe just thought it's all about taking it offshore, tell me what your team actually do. Why do they exist? We, we partner with our clients. We work with them across their business. Um, I pair them up with what we call a lead VA who gets to know them, builds a relationship with our client, um, gets to know their business, and they then project manage that client's tasks amongst the team. Um, so we've got, for example, graphic designer, WordPress, social media, content writers, um, so that you've got the best person um, for that particular job. 
Yeah. So it's not like a, a traditional kind of VA could just be one person and they might try and do everything for you. But there's some challenges around that in terms of specialty, but also what happens if they're not available, right? Absolutely. Um, so it's a win-win our model and that our clients are getting that expertise for their particular tasks. And from a team point of view, our unbillable time is much less because we're not constantly trying to learn different things. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And what does one of your ideal clients look like? They're out there. Yes. Making a difference in the world. Yes. Um, they share our core values. They're great communicators. They're respectful. They're not micromanagers. Yes. Um, and they see the value in what we can do f for them. Fantastic. Okay. So we go back to 2020 when we had that sort of that initial catch up. And I know we we're very excited and we we're all very keen to get on board. And then of course, COVID hit, right? Yes. And, and I reached out to you and I was, Deborah, can we postpone this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what clients we're going to lose. I'm scared and uncertain. And yeah, can we pause? Yep. And what was my response? <laughs> yes, um, more than happy to pause, but think about it, Justine. Um, is this not the best time to be looking at a system like EOE? So no matter what the future brings, we're ready for it. Yeah, perfect. And I'm so pleased that you kind of thought about that and came on board. So we actually started back in March. I think it was the end of March 2020, which was just as everything had locked down. Now, fortunately, uh, because you're a virtual team and I can hold my sessions virtually, we were able to get stuck into it then. And we did. We decided with a focus day. Um, yeah. And that was, so that was almost 16 months ago now. Um, I think in the beginning, tell us what that journey was like for you. I, I came to you because, and I know it's an EOS term, but we'd hit the ceiling. Yeah. Um, 2019, there's been a whole lot of virtual assistance come to the market. So we were no longer getting that really good organic growth. So I was a bit tired, but losing the passion. And I knew I needed to do something to be in a different place um, in the future. So like I said, I tried self-implementing, um, but having those initial days with you really shone the light on the fact that me implementing EOS was one dimensional. Um, having the value of someone outside of our organization and bringing in our leadership team to work on our VTO and our core values and our accountability chart, I canned everything I'd done <laughs> by myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, what was the, the value of having an external person? So I often get asked this, but I mean, I'm, I'm all for people self -imitation. In fact, as long as people use EOS, I'm a happy person, right? Because I just want people to have a, a better life through a better business. So please, everybody, you know, do whatever you can to get EOS into your business. But what do you think the, the key differences are between trying to do it yourself as a self-implementer and actually working with a professional EOS implementer? The key differences were, oh, there's so many. One, you taught us EOS in the order it should be taught. Um, so you took us through the exercises, the planning sessions, um, and we got the very best out of EOS, whereas I was picking what was fun to do. Um, <laughs> another factor is you we're accountable f to you so because I trust you but also because we are paying for um your support yeah I can't afford to not make the most use of it so there's that accountability factor mm -hmm. you call me on my bullshit excuses <laughs> <laughs> you you encouraged me to have some difficult conversations when I would have gone around that route um because i don't like confrontations um so you pushed me and my team to uh, what's the word uh to do more yep okay so pushing you sort of to to, to lift that game that's fair enough and I, I remember in the beginning, I mean, we, we now know that you're the visionary, right? But you were actually wearing many, many hats in the beginning, weren't you? Uh, yes. 
I was that. I'm not the best person to wear those hats. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> so we now we've now got to, so we so we're 60 months into the journey. We've actually gone through our annual planning session just recently, and it was really wonderful. We've now got a full team. We've got an integrator in the business. We've got you as the visionary. Uh, we've got a person who's looking after operations. We've got the finance side. You still wear some of the sales and marketing at the moment, don't you? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But in um, general, what is what's the change been like for you to be able to get to that? And and what was it like having to let go? Um, letting go wasn't once I had the right people. So it took us a little while to, um, for example, find an integrator. Um, it took us a little while to find Nikki as our operations manager because it was so important. Um, to get the right people because we're about people mm. uh, once once we did that then letting go was easy because the trust was there the planning and the foundational work that we'd done with you was there yeah um yeah so letting go as opposed to seeing the value and bringing more heads into the game um was a win-win yeah and so now i mean i know that people people are often looking for that kind of magic silver bullet I always say to anybody if you're looking for a magic silver bullet or a magic potion EOS is not it because it takes hard work it takes consistency it really means you have to stick at it and um, adopt the process really purely the first six months would you how would you say it was in terms of the business was it what were the challenges along the way you know that cheese egg good things take time yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the the first six months was slow. We, um, we were getting our systems up to speed. We were working hard to make sure that they were followed by all. So all that non-exciting um, legwork. But so we'd look and we were so focused on issues. We had to make a really strong point to look back at what we'd achieved um, each week and each month and each quarter. But the momentum picked up. So um, our successes and our achievements, um, they're coming faster. And, and I mean, we've got some big goals that we've worked on with you. We want to go from a team of 27 as it is now to 500 in 10 years. Yeah. Um, but I know that we've got the foundational work to be able to do that um, in a good way. Yep. Fantastic. And you now, so now you have really kind of embraced that visionary role and I've seen what that's done for the business, but can you share a little bit with us what that has meant for you to be freed up to do what we would call your God-given talent or your unique ability? What does that feel like? What has it meant for you? Oh, it's so exciting. Um, we've, for the past five years, I've been wanting to do online courses Um so having this space has meant that we've launched our Virtual Business Manager Academy. Yep. It's meant that I'm spending much more time, like we've recently implemented one-on-one -on -one catch ups with each of the team. Um, and I have one a week, which is just priceless. It's about, you know, those personal connections that I really care about, yep. which you don't get time for when you're, you know, swapping hats <laughs> all I day long. Is, yeah. <laughs> so they would be the biggest things, just having the space to get things done that have been on the back burner and those relationships. Yeah. Okay. So was there a, I mean, it, it's different for every company. So you can't say, hey, look at month seven, suddenly everything falls into place. But when do you think everything did start to fall into place and you could start to see, sort of some measurable results because it isn't an overnight thing no it would have been late last year yeah um, we were hitting our financial targets we weren't hitting um some of our intangible um like we've got a happiness scale and things like that um so late last year we really started to see we were we were achieving 90% of our weekly to-dos. We were on track with our quarterly rocks. Um, we were much more focused about what we could achieve. So we were being more realistic with our weekly level 10 meetings. Um, yeah, so late last year. Okay. 
And how did that feel? Well, so <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and I think I've said this to you before, I had a small business mentality when I came to you. It was me yeah. and my team. Um, we've, I'm now at the helm of a business that I'm so proud of, that we know what our strengths are. We know who we want to work with. We know what our goals are. Um, so knowing where we're going has been huge. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so proud of that. Excellent. And of course, we did our annual planning session just um, a month ago, I think it was. And and review, in the annual planning session, we review the year that has been. And you had a fantastic year last year, right? We did. Yeah. Um, and yet you still helped us make, um, identify a whole lot of issues that we still had. <laughs> <laughs> we Working through that SWOT analysis with you, yep. getting the um, leadership team involved, I keep referring back to it, Deb. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what are our issues? What are our opportunities? Um, yeah, I was nervous coming into that annual planning because I didn't want to let you down. Oh, um, it's not about me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I had a picture of what we were going to achieve and you hit it out of the park. Um, you can't always do that without someone outside who's, helping you see things that you wouldn't see in your little comfort zone. Yeah. It's one of the things I talk about, you know, my role within those days is, is basically threefold. You know, I am a teacher in terms of helping you to understand how to use the EOS tools in the proven, proven process in the right way. I'm also a facilitator and um, people who are listening in can't see, but I've got my elephant here in the back <laughs> of the podcast room and I use my elephant, my other tools to actually help facilitate to get people comfortable with being uncomfortable and having those sometimes difficult conversations. And then I am the coach, which is the person who, if you think about a coach of a of a sports team they actually are not in the team in the weeds doing the stuff they can actually take a, a a much more holistic view because they're not in that involved and I think that's probably one of the key things that I love is that I I treat every one of my clients if it's my own business but at the same time I am actually able to see it from a coaching perspective which is looking at what you're doing from the outside and being able to give some insight from that perspective and that's what I think a lot of businesses are missing is that outside that coaching that implementer yep. role um you don't realize how much further you can push yourself without that yes hey one of the things we did in the annual planning session and we always do was a little team health exercise you and sure without giving fun. away everything <laughs> about it can you tell us a little bit about you know what that was like for you because i know you were a bit nervous about it and then uh, what you how you felt afterwards that was really hard um yeah, you took us into that exercise saying, here's a fun little exercise. Um, and each of us, um, each of the leadership team had to think really hard. Uh, we've put the one thing that we need to work on that came out of that exercise. It's um, We touch on it in our weekly level 10 meetings. Yep. Um, we can't tick it off until the end of the year, but... That, that was really hard and it really helped to grow the trust and support that we have in the team. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I know yeah. you, you were you were very nervous about it. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's great to see that you're, you're using it. Okay. I, so th I, I like think I actually teared up um, during that exercise. So your version of fun and mine are slightly different. <laughs> Okay, so I might be a little bit of a sadist or whatever. <laughs> Masochist, one or the other, both, both perhaps. Um, hey, just from a, uh, a tool perspective, EOS has got a, a huge sort of, well, not a huge raft of tools. It's got a, a core set of tools and some additional tools that actually help. And um, the one of the things we, we love about EOS is how simple it is. But simple doesn't always mean easy, right? So simple, we use, we use tools like a SWAT, which has been around for many, many centuries. Um, but it's about how you actually implement it. Do you have a favorite tool do you think from the EOS toolkit? I mentioned working through our core cool values with you was one of the most pivotal things that we've done. Yep. IDSing we're still getting better at. I've asked my um, integrator to become an expert on it so that we can make that 
um, something we do as an entire team, um, as part of our day to day. The level ten meetings, yeah, is my favourite tool. Yeah, actually, it's one of my favourite ones too. I actually think that if if you did nothing else but instigate level ten meetings, I think it has a a, a fundamental um, impact on the business that you just can't get yeah. from any other tool. That's so, where yeah. our traction and our momentum comes from. Those weekly level ten meetings. And I remember back in the beginning, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, you know, we, I always teach people how to do the level 10 meetings and I come and check in to see how they're going. Um, and I think we had our check in and we, we recognize a few things that could be tweaked and we help with that. And then you kind of fell off the wagon a little bit with the level 10 meetings, didn't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we were sprawled on the asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> and, and still, we're still, how many months have we been on this EOS journey? Yep. Last week at our level 10, we were talking, like I said, about IDSing. Yep. And I said to the ladies, if Deb was in on this meeting, would she be proud of how we've just IDS these issues? And we decided you wouldn't be proud, which is why <laughs> Sue's to do is to go away and become an expert in IDSing. I think the problem was... I IDS and I didn't let the team contribute. <laughs> so I talked for five minutes, came up with the solution and said, okay, so we can tick that off. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're recognizing it. And that's the important thing. And yeah. I think that's that's part of why I say it's a journey, right? Because it, it doesn't, you can't just start doing it and get it all up at your hundred percent right in the beginning. It takes time to to strengthen like muscles at the gym, right? It takes time to strengthen those muscles in the business. Um, and the stronger they get, and we talk about working on those six components, then the stronger you get in those six key components, the better the business becomes, the stronger the business overall becomes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So um in terms of the journey, obviously, you know, you've been doing it for a while now. Could you share with us sort of three top tips that you would give to somebody else who might be considering going on a similar journey? Yes, absolutely. So as I said, um, we were introduced to EOS by a client and I went and did my research, worked through some of the tools. So I had an awareness of EOS and I knew it was a good fit for us. The second tip I would say would be to think about where you're at in your business now and where you want to be in, in a year's time. Yeah. I knew if I didn't change, nothing would change. Mm -hmm. um, and I really wanted to get to a different place. Yeah. And the third thing would be to have a no strings chat with the lovely Deborah. Um, <laughs> you. Because you don't hold back. Um, you say it like you see it and you need to talk to someone outside of your team. Yeah, fair enough. That's great. And like I said, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not a pressure salesperson at all. In fact, I don't actually mind if you work with me or not. I'm just really passionate about seeing people have a better life. And I think the EOS tools help us to do that by creating that better business. So the free tools are amazing, aren't they? I mean, you, you, I'm always gobsmacked by how much EOS just gives to people without any expectation in return. And I guess that comes back to our core value of help first. But it is amazing what they, you can get online without any... Um, handing over of money, no commitment. It's just they want to help you to do better. Um, and, and they're also, yes, yeah, so they're invaluable as you're doing your research and possibly I know some companies do look at self-implementing. Yep. They're also invaluable when you're working with, like we still refer back to them if we're doing a quarterly team meeting and we want to talk about, clarity breaks or something we'll go to the free tools and this is your quarter of this is your whole team meeting that you have right yes yes, yes. Yeah. so yeah. you're starting to roll it out now into those next levels down and getting people to start using those tools in their everyday life as well absolutely it's doing our business no good if it's just the leadership team who's embracing our eos we want to um, we want our clients to benefit from it as well. So we need the whole team to use it. 
Yeah, fantastic. Well, I've got to say, I have genuinely loved working with you again in a different capacity this time round, but I've loved it. I've loved seeing you build up the team. I mean, having those right people is just so important. And I know you've got a really great team around you now, which makes it um, much easier for you. If somebody wanted to get in contact with you, Justine, and find out more about how you might be able to help their business or even just talk about EOS, I know you're very, very generous about talking about EOS and what it's done for you. How would they get in contact with you? I'm on LinkedIn, Justine Parsons, or go to our website, um, yourva.co.nz. I'm happy to talk to anyone. And I'm going to put you on the spot here now, but we've talked about core values. I know that you do use them because you're always looking for new VAs as well. So if there just happen to be somebody who either wants to become a VA or knows somebody wants to become a VA, what would be the, the, the core values you're looking for in your virtual assistants? And I have put you on the spot there, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you have put us on the spot. Um, we are looking for, we've got six core values yep. um, and they're right through our onboarding process um, so we are humbly confident we want to exceed expectations we're positively determined socially authentic ethically honest and we're trailblazers yeah, fantastic. And I know when you do your core value speech, you've got a whole lot of stuff behind that that really helps people understand. How do you use those when it comes to employing people? What do you what do you do to to make sure that they actually because people can say, oh yes, no, I'm 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 definitely humbly confident. Look how humbly confident I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we they're in our uh, they're in the application form yep. that's on our website. If you're looking to apply to join us. Um, they, so just simply we list our core values and we ask applicants to explain what that term means to them. Yep. Um, we ask them what their core values are. We talk about it. Um, onboarding, they apply, then they do a series of tests because um, we don't want average people working with us. We want well, amazing yeah. people. <laughs> um, we go through the values in... Um, the Zoom before they join the team and then we have an onboarding dashboard um, so they're repeated in there. Um, we also recognise one of the team each month who has represented our core values or one of our core values um, and we look for those same values when we're working with clients yep. <coughs> so they're integral into everything that we do. Oh, I can see that, that's wonderful. Hey look, Thank you again for spending some time with me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm fortunate I get to talk to you quite regularly, but it's really nice of you to actually share your knowledge with our listeners and, and, and with me again. So thank you so much. I look forward to seeing, you know, I know what we've got planned for this year. I can't wait to see you achieve it. I know that you will. Um, so, so yeah, um, thank you very much, Justine. Oh, thank you for inviting me on. Um, it's a pleasure to share my journey and I'm just really thankful that you're part of it. Oh, thanks, Justine. Wonderful. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.